Well, good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to give this presentation. Uh, I thought I would change the theme and talk about energy, which I can claim I'm working for the past 40 years. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Since I'm kind of happy, I thought I would do this. And uh, yesterday I asked my uh, friend, the guy, is this the proper translation? I don't know what's happening with the Google these days. Uh, sustainability is an important issue that we uh, always consider when we are talking about energy. So I went through and I got all these definitions, which is to keep going, low energy, uh, able to fix, easy to run, renewable. So I thought it would be uh, good to have this definition here. Of course, you know she's smaller than I am. This was an exercise I'm doing since I'm moving to investigate the energy efficiency in ships. I've done a lot of work for energy efficiency in buildings. As a matter of fact, I do chair the Energy Efficiency Committee International with ISO. We, the title of this committee is to design energy efficient built environments. And since the ships are part of the built environment, then it is of very much interest to me to do some work on ships. And to do some work on ships, then we have to consider the driving force and also to consider the air conditioning and the, the, the clean and air quality inside the compartments in the ship itself. I'm here putting some of the Egyptian old um, navy or uh, ships and also the Greek. You cannot see the difference. Probably as the low as you can. Now we move to the topic. Since I'm claiming to be working with air conditioning and environmental, then it's my job as a designer and a professor to keep these lungs running with fresh air, clean, at very low cost. It's very important. So the actions that we have to do is uh, to improve our energy efficiency. And how to use large resources, smart metering, smarter energy pricing, the greener appliances, and that's I think matches the theme of this conference, uh, energy smart business, better building methods, and also climate pro protection. Climate protection includes also that we use the proper refrigerants, and this is another topic I'm sure the UN here are doing a lot of effort in that. So this is the first one. I like this diagram and I always use it in my lectures. Uh, if we start any uh, problem, then we do have the... Uh, to identify the problem uh, in, in the first place. And uh, then we do the development, conception design, detailed the design, the memory. Sometimes we have to do some maintenance and when we reach the end of retirement or redesign. So our stakeholders, the people who pay money for that, are very curious to get the, uh, the job done. Then we have some stumbling blocks that stop us from achieving our goal. So our goal is to have energy efficient building environment or ships. And to do that we have to cross from the construction and we have a hurdle, we have a river, we have a barrier in the middle where we uh, do have to uh, cross market, financial, technical, awareness and institution. Uh, and this is the uh, job of many of our colleagues in making the policy to bridge to high efficiency uh, systems. The committee that I work with is called ISO TC205 and we are working on producing design methodologies for energy efficient buildings or energy efficient built environment and it starts by the assumption at the top and it goes down to uh, the uh, results of the design and it's, this is the ISO 23045 since I'm from Egypt we are fond of pyramids so we 
and my colleague Dick Van Dyke from the Netherlands came up in 2009 with this idea of energy performance in built environments. What are the inputs and what are the outputs? And uh, as a result of this, we also look at what the standards are needed for built environments. And for that, we have to look into the uh, inputs, parameters. We have the electric appliances, lighting, ventilation, hot water, cooling, heating. All these are the requirements. And these are the systems that are available to us. And sometimes we have electricity to export, and sometimes it is uh, generated on site. Human being, comfort, cold or hot, that's the question to be asked. So we have to look into thermal comfort, and uh, that takes into account people working or people sitting or dancing. I was designing a discotheque in some place last week, and we found that the energy required to air condition these people in the discotheque is horrendous. So we start cutting down the number of people because its density is about one square meter per person. So it's, it's, we have to cut on the various uh, energy waste in buildings. Uh, energy certificates that comes with the energy efficiency attempts, and uh, this is an international uh, way of presentation, seven stages from A to G, and uh, it, it, it happens in the US and in Europe, and also it happens in everywhere around the world. You have China, you have India, South Africa, but all of them we can see that they are seven stages. Now we go to uh, ship energy and propulsion. Propulsion we have, it depends on the size of the ship, speed, length and cost of fuel. We have so, diesel engines. This is just a historical background of the diesel used to power the system. Uh, it has its own uh, advantages and disadvantages. Uh, most efficient is the diesel for climbing because it can start and go. If you look into steam turbines, it, it needs about six or seven hours until the boiler goes up and the steam uh, is produced. So everyone knows that uh, this feed is going out. Steam turbines is also highly used and recommended. And, uh, these are the Parsons turbo, which were the, one of the old and very unique uh, designs. We need to uh, use the uh, diesel engine and ships to uh, generate electricity and also to power the system. So these engines generated is connected to the generator. You can see it there. Or uh, generator to drive the motors and then to drive the engine shafts, which you can see one, two, and three there. And then we have also thermoelectric that's used in turbine and steam turbine. Uh, gas turbines also are uh, very uh, popular in ships. This is a gas turbine uh, basic design. It has a compressor that draws the air from the atmosphere into a combustion chamber where you have the gases. The gases float over the uh, turbine blades and it produces power. Can you see this? This It's not working. So sometimes it can use also nuclear power and that will uh, generate uh, the electricity. Thank you. So now the, the theme and the topic of the paper is the uh, tips. First tip is to define energy management through typical operation maintenance perception. And uh, that's the first if you need to reduce the energy and make an energy efficient system, you have to have a management system with data communication, implementation and tracking. The second uh, tip 
is to determine the available data, metered data uh, database, and you have uh, a database of collected information about the energy used in your system. The third tip would be to select your energy management team and uh, do the various capacity building and upgrade to develop lines of communication and evaluate the available staff and resources. That's a human resource thing. The fourth uh, tip will involve operator and maintenance team. It's very important to, to, to uh, get the ideas that and determine uh, low and no low uh, cost options to reduce the energy in the system. Now we're talking about the fifth tip, which to select is uh, the priority of how we can save energy because we have a lot of ways known uh, for saving energy. Yes. The sixth step is to uh, involve the operator and the facility management staff and team to understand their uh, perspective about uh, trouble uh, that can happen in the system and how to uh, manage to change and correct. To measure uh, how much energy is being used by different equipment, it's like we have a kind of a sanky diagram that tells you the energy flow in the system and to pinpoint the areas where deficiency may exist. We implement uh, a low energy efficiency operational ideas uh, to maintain the communication among the people within the system. The ninth step is to measure when we determine the savings from the operational uh, changes. Especially that you do work at full load, part load, uh, you have a mix of uh, energy sources to, to deal with, you have different uh, occupants uh, that need different uh, treatments. The last one is the uh, continue in, in implement the proper documentation and to apply the new and the current uh, standards and uh, codes for the maintenance and operation of the system. Now, this is the part regarding the energy. What about the use of the air conditioning engines? Now, we have air coming from this world, it comes to you. Its task is to make you comfortable. How can we measure that you are comfortable in a space like this? We are blessed to have something which is called CFD, that's Computational Fluid Dynamics. It starts about 45 years ago at Imperial College, where I got my PhD. And uh, since that time, it's becoming very popular. It tells you a lot. We have to check the accuracy. So the CFD, Computational Fluid Dynamics, is a method to predict the air distribution, water distribution, in any confined configuration. For example, it can be applied in hydraulics, in marine and power generation. Uh, it can be applied how the hull of the ship when it's moving inside a waterway, how the water goes, what are the resistance, how we can select the, um, the rudder of the ship, and a lot of things about uh, the, the fluid dynamics around it, and it, it is transferred at the end to be the energy efficiency. I'm giving an example here of a guy who is sleeping on a bed and is just sneezing and coughing. Imagine this in one of the rooms in a ship. And you can see how here the uh, uh, distribution of the particles and these are your supply and extract from this room. So, CD can be very helpful in telling us where the air goes. How, what's the temperature here, what's the temperature there, and, and what is the carbon monoxide and what carbon dioxide distribution. We use it quite a lot. Uh, it, it depends on using uh, mathematics. Governing equations, I'm sure, we all have these lovely pieces of information when we get at the second or third year mechanical or electrical. And there was no uh, direct way to solve it because these are uh, partial differential equations. With the advancement of the computers, we manage by finite difference or finite elements or finite or control volumes now to solve this. The problem was 
we assume it's in orthogonal, I mean rectangular grid. So if you have a curvature like in a ship, you cannot make it. Now the, the, they are curvilinear, they are uh, tetrahedral uh, grids, so you can really carve your grids to match your body, the body of the, uh, the ship. These are the equations. For example, here we have what we call structured and unstructured grid. You can see this is an airfoil, and you can, you can you can really have your grids like this, not like this. This is the old way. This is the new way. So with the advancement of the computation, we can predict. I, I had the honor and pleasure to design the air conditioning system for the Church of Christ in Egypt. You know Christ and Mary visit Egypt when he was a baby. He spent a few nights in Cairo. They built the church. Now it is about 1700 years old. So I had the pleasure and honor that the Pope approved me as a consultant to design the air conditioning for this archaeological place. Oh my God! Of course, I can just go duct, duct. That's it. No, I did a CFD calculations. We did some measurements, and uh, we optimized the calculations because we cannot afford to do a mistake. And it's working now for two years. Thanks a lot. And it has been officially inaugurated about six months ago. I also used the same technique to design the ventilation system for the archaeological tombs in Egypt, 5,000 years old. King uh, Ramses, Tutankhamun, all of them. And we use the same technique. So we, we say in simple, where you should extract the air. Where your, uh, your input and outlet should be to get a, a better uh, energy uh, performance. So these are the bad guys. These are better, I know. Nobody likes this. But when I tell my students when I'm giving lectures around the world that these equations let me wear a, a Pierre Cardin suit and tie, then they turn and be interested to know how. Because this is where the money is now, is to apply what we learn at school to serve our community through energy analysis or to understanding what's happening inside buildings, ships and so on. When I know that I'm coming here, so I ask one of my students, so I please and do calculate the distribution around this carrier. So he did. I'm sorry the movie wouldn't work on this system, but it is there. And also we did it in another. But it is, I put it as a movie on my, uh, I'm sorry, Facebook website, and you can see how it is done. So, and this is only two months ago. So what I mean is, we have a very good tool that we should use. Uh, to use it, we have to test its validity. We have to assess its validity. And we do that by comparing to experimentation. This is why experimentation are always very, very important. Of uh, course, this is my cat, and I'm always sitting. He used to appreciate my work. I'd like to thank you very much for your patience. Usually when I put this, people ask me where is the hand, the guy. So I, I put this one. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Are there any questions? No questions, of course. Nobody wants to ask me. Can it be used for retro commissioning? Like if these are in the wrong location. Yes, 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 yes. Well, um, the question, as I understood, is can we use CFT for uh, retro commission? Yes. Uh, uh, we have a, a large um, car park, bus park, inside Cairo in the main square. And uh, it's working now for one year and they suffer a lot of problems. One of my students, he did calculate it again. And we start on the computer changing the location of the air handling unit, uh, I mean extract fans, or switching one off until we get the uh, percentage of carbon monoxide to the level of the international sun. So we suggest to them, please correct. So it, it, it can have this power. It takes, because it's, it's easy. Uh, you optimize the location of the supply, you also optimize the, uh, the number, you look into, because when we do design, 
Let me confess. 40 years ago, we used to be very simple. So this we treat as an opening. Now we treat as a grill with the details of the um, slots of the grill. So what, what comes out, you see, will be more near to the reality. Uh, also, one of the projects that I designed was the stadium, football stadium in uh, Qatar. They are going to play in 2020 uh, the, the World Cup, if they do. Maybe. And it was a stadium with no roof and it is air conditioned. So you have to be very, very careful where you put your supply and your ex it's, 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 it's been on excuse now like this. So, we designed it using a computer. We used 20 million grid nodes. When I did the uh, St. Mary's Orthodox Church, it is an Orthodox Church in Cairo, uh, I think we spent about 8 million grid nodes. When I was doing my PhD, the maximum grid I was able to do at London University was 8,000 grid nodes. So 8,000 grid nodes in 1972 to 20 million grid nodes in 2015. This is an advancement, and it's not only me, it's all of us. So it's, uh, my research group now is about 100 uh, students, uh, about 10 uh, associate professors and uh, assistant professors. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned that... Uh, Just a moment, the we remember the session, so... Yes, you have to use the mic. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned that uh, one of the ten tips is uh, that you should consider thermal comfort. How you consider thermal comfort on boats when uh, there's no references, uh, there's no experience for thermal comfort research in the boats? Yes, yeah, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Ashley, you probably heard Ashley today many times, is one of the international authorities that devoted much of the time and resources to define thermal comfort. And I have the honor to be a member of uh, thermal comfort committee, which is uh, SST uh, 55, for eight years now. We define how we are feeling comfort. So we have, no we have numbers that can be calculated based on experimentation. It's called Vanguard model, and it goes between minus three to seven. Uh, zero is almost neutral, which is feeling comfort. 3 is too hot, minus 3 is too cold. So we calculate, for example, uh, this room, I do put design of the edge system here, and I assume that we have in the room 50 people sitting uh, at rest. Then I start calculating the PV, predicted mean volt, which is comfort, at each one. And I make contours of PUV, and based on that, I say about 80% of the people are comfortable. I wanted to make it 100. Then I, I start changing this. Uh, the studies we are doing now in Ashley is the dress, because it's important. The comfort depends on the dress, age, and the uh, physiological status, of course. Most of the studies were made on dress and of the European type. Now we are doing African, Asian, and Arab. It's a completely different outfit from, from toe to head. So you are trying to improve. Of course, a lot of people are working, and we have many, many of the international professors from the US, from Korea, from Japan, and from Greece. Of course, we have many that are contributing to this. Uh, if you like, uh, you have my email. Please don't hesitate to write to me, I can send you. Uh, I have one book which was published last year. It's called Air Distribution in Buildings. And it takes stadium, churches, mosques, uh, football playground, hospitals, operating theaters. It's a general, I'm not making propaganda for the book, but it's, it's one of the things that's out. Thank you.